Um, today, the, uh, we will talk about, the, uh, again, the software supply chain uh, topic. But uh, the unique things about this session is uh, we are trying to apply the same ideas, software supply chain security integrity to the specifically in the CD GitOps CD scenario. So we will discuss the issue and uh, 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 propose a solution to this. Okay. Uh, I'm Yuji Watanabe from IBM Research. Uh, I'm a uh, senior technical staff member uh, and uh, I'm leading the uh, several the, uh, software supply chain security project in the research. So, um, Shiro? Yes, I am Shiro Kitahara from all of Okay, so uh, okay. Uh, I'm Hiroki Tahara and from IBM Research Tokyo, and I'm uh, I'm working on CD GitOps uh, area, and I'm doing several OSS contributions like Sig, Sig Store or uh, today's main topic, Arrow CD. Yep, thank you so much. Okay, so today the today the. Uh, so first, uh, I will talk about the a bit background of this topic. Then, the, then the, uh, what uh, we are trying to uh, discuss in this talk. In this talk then, then uh, we will explain the several building blocks, the uh, YAML manifest signature and uh, its enforcement. So then discuss uh, how how we we are, how can we apply the. Uh, Technology to the CD GitOps, and uh, we found several. We disc, uh, point out some several issues, and uh, talk about the uh, uh, proposed solution called Interest. Then uh, uh, Hiro will do the demo. Okay. So the uh, first uh, software supply chain is a uh, uh, product. So the protecting the product from the uh, source, uh, source, the, and uh, its build at uh, the uh, factory and. Uh, go to the, uh, uh, it's packaged, then become the product. So, but uh, from the end user perspective, uh, we need more uh, protection. Like it should be securely delivered and it should be securely uh, maintained. And at before, actually the uh, protect, it should be protected uh, at the time of the use. So the whole this end to end is at the scope of the, uh, uh, protection uh, from the user perspective. When we think about the uh, same things in the uh, application deployment uh, in the cloud native case, the, the very high level uh, picture, the first uh, uh, source is in Git repo, uh, it comes, goes to the CI pipeline, then builds the image and push it to the registry and the manifest is uh, uh, created at the git repo. Then the, when deploy the application, the uh, image goes to the cluster, uh, uh, manifest goes to the uh, cluster by a CD pipeline, then application is stand up to the cluster. So this is a, a, a kind of the end to end uh, from the source to the actual uh, time of the use. So what is the risk? So the, uh, maybe uh, some case, uh, 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 image on the registry, maybe the target, and uh, uh, manifest on the Git repo is also the target. So, and the, even after the deployment, the manifest is on the uh, cluster, so that it may be changed by some someone. So those uh, uh, attack and uh, uh, malicious activity uh, is, a, is a target for the protection. Okay, so, so for preventing this, uh, uh, actually, for, pre for protecting the integrity of the, uh, this artifact and the, the uh, application, the, usually the signature is applied. So the, the many technology uh, uh, exist for the signing the image and uh, how to protect, the, how to enforce the image signed on the cluster side. But uh, 
from the, uh, for the application, the uh, image and the manifest are equally important. So the, we also need to protect the integrity of the manifest uh, to secure the entire uh, pipeline, entire uh, life cycle. So the, in this talk, we are uh, mainly focusing on the uh, manifest side. So how the manifest can be securely signed and deployed to the target cluster. Okay. So the, for, the, for that purpose, uh, we uh, actually the, uh, contributed to the Sigstar project uh, the, for the manifest signing. And uh, this is a, a CLY2 uh, QBCTI uh, plugin. The, by using, for example, by using this command, the, uh, some annotation, uh, signature annotation is attached on the original YAML manifest. So the, in this case, uh, uh, two annotations. One is an encoded message, and the uh, second one is an encoded signature. So, so this is, so the signature is encoded, uh, in included on the uh, manifest. So if you can de directly deploy this to the cluster, signature is also the, uh, attached on the deployed uh, uh, resource manifest. So the, uh, how to verify the signatures? Uh, so the, so that this is a, a flow of the, how the signature is used to protect the uh, manifest. So the signer uh, first signed the manifest, then push into the Git repo. Uh, it will be pushed, pushed, uh, pulled, uh, deployed approved the uh, uh, manifest to deploy, to deploy the cluster. So before deploy that, the deployer can directly verify this signature uh, by using uh, the CLI2. And then if the verification is okay, so the deployer can deploy this uh, manifest to the cluster. Cluster side, the uh, admission control is, is enabled. So the independently, the, this signi uh, signature attached on the manifest is verified uh, in the cluster side. Uh, that, that verification happens in the admission time, or uh, even after that, uh, uh, its uh, signature is continuously mon monitored. So you can enable these uh, types of the protection at the cluster side admission control. The, uh, the, the, so the, it's, uh, uh, so the sig sigstore library to, uh, tool for the YAML manifest signing is uh, used is under, in the admission controller. So the one admission controller is the integrity shield. The, this is the project we are uh, uh, contributing taking to the uh, open cluster management project. Uh, it's uh, uh, extend, ex it works with the OPA gatekeeper as the uh, admission control. Then uh, integrity shield uh, has integration with the OPA gatekeeper to provide the YAML manifest verification, uh, signature verification. Also, the uh, very recent release of the Kiberno has uh, the YAM, uh, YAML manifest signature verification capability. So the several uh, two can be used to enable the admission control. Okay. So the uh, but uh, we then next next we we are uh, we will see the more compl complicated situation. The the some case. Uh, you don't push the manifest directly to the Git repo. Instead, uh, you push the source material of the, uh, to produce uh, some material, uh, 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 manifest. Then the actual manifest is generated some to write the customized command. So customized command uh, is already integrated in the kubectl command. Also, that you can use the directly customized command. Then that produced uh, um, manifest. Uh, from the source material on the Git repo, plus uh, extra, uh, you can also include external dependen dependency uh, material. The, also, the, you can input the some temporal template parameter. Then the command, this command, produces uh, a generated manifest. So, in this case, uh, the, the discussion is the situation is a bit different. Okay. Before going to that, uh, let me explain more. Uh, uh, situation of the, uh, this uh, templating. So if you have, so the source material is not just one, one repository. So you can have multiple repositories like the 
application repository, config repository. Uh, so you can use the two, two uh, repository as the uh, as a kind of the parent child relationship. Uh, but uh, you, you can also have very different complex scenario. Uh, each organization has different uh, application component uh, uh, as a kind of sub uh, configuration, some module. Then all the uh, uh, source material is uh, composed into the uh, single uh, YAML set of the uh, YAML manifest. So the, this is also, so this is a kind of the software supply chain issue, very similar to the uh, uh, image build case. So you, you, you sometimes, the, you, if you build a source uh, uh, image, you need to put the uh, lot of the external dependency. Uh, but the same uh, issue happened also in this manifest build. So in this case, uh, so from the uh, signature verification viewpoint, uh, the situation become uh, complicated. So, so signer can uh, put the signature on the source repository, and the deployer can depl verify the uh, source material. But the, the deployer, after that verification, deployer do the uh, manifest build, and then deploy the generated manifest. That means generated manifest does not have the signature. And so the, that means deployer can verify the signature before actually deploy, but it cannot, it, it, it's not delivered to the cluster side. So cluster side admission control is, doesn't work so, uh, in this case. So that means uh, uh, cluster side needs to rely on the pre-check by the deployer, okay? So, but uh, uh, this is becomes a, uh, situation in the CD GitOx. A CD GitOx case, uh, if the, some, git, some configuration, configuration is managed in the Git repo. So if the source material changed, it's automatically synced to the target cluster. Uh, for that thing, uh, during that thing, uh, CD includes a kind of build and deploy step. The build step in, uh, gets the in, uh, source material input, then generate manifest, then it's deployed to the cluster automatically whenever the source material, so source Git repository is updated. So the, if we use this, uh, this CD GitOps very, very uh, useful too, but if we apply the, this CD GitOps too, the, we, the generated manifest don't have the signature as I mentioned, explained like before. So that this is a uh, kind of the mutation happened in the C CD pipeline. So no signature is, is delivered to the target cluster. So this is a, a motivation that we, uh, uh, we come up, came up with the, the internet project. So the, in this case, uh, there are several questions. The, the how, what, kind of, what kind of check is done in the CD site and how build is, uh, manifest build is properly done. And uh, the, so the signature is not attached to the generated, one, generated manifest. So, signature-based protection does not work at the, after the deployment. So those kind of the, uh, uh, but still, so in this case, we need to trust the uh, CD side. Uh, uh, the cluster side, there is no verification. Uh, we want to improve this situation. The, that is, uh, uh, interest uh, allow us to do the kind of the trust, but verify approach. The interest is uh, as the capability uh, attached to the Argo CD. Then uh, first, three function. One is verify the source material signature. Then the second, if it's okay, just put the signature on the generated manifest. Then the, these uh, uh, transform from the Git report to the uh, uh, cluster side um, uh, on the CD GitOps. The, we produce the uh, uh, provenance record uh, to to, uh, to transparent, to make this transparent. So the, this three function is a core capability of the interest. Uh, how interest works, actually, the, this is a, a inter, a con, actually interest is a controller attached, attached into the, in the algo CD. So basically, the, it uh, monitors uh, application seek, uh, happen, which happens in between the uh, Git repo and the target cluster. 
uh, then it's, it's reported in the, in the application here. Application CR is uh, Argo CD uh, the configuration. It specifies uh, how the GitOps syncs uh, should be uh, performed. So the interest controller monitors this application here, then detects the, okay, so the uh, ops, uh, GitOps syncs happen, then uh, trigger the uh, three function, uh, verify source signature, source, source material signature, and uh, produce, uh, produce attach the signature to the uh, generated manif uh, manifest. Then the uh, provenance record push, pushed into the provenance store from the interest controller. So by using this, the signature is attached on the generated manifest. So target cluster side, the admission, admission control can successfully protect the uh, uh, manifest by using signature uh, admission, admission time and also the even after the admission. Okay, so the, uh, this is a high level idea of the uh, interest. So from now the uh, hero will uh, show the, some demo and uh, some D. So hand over to the hero. So, uh, okay, so let me start my demo. And uh, I will show how Argo CD users can protect their own CD GitOps pipeline with Argo CD interest. Okay, so uh, during my demo, let's assume that I am an Argo CD user and I have already configured my CD GitOps pipeline with Argo CD. And the uh, left source site, uh, these source repositories are synced into target cluster based on my, app my application CR. And, and so the point, he, point here is uh, the source repository can be multiple and nested. So this means the um, source repository in CD GitOps could be uh, very, co could have very complicated de dependency relationship. So in my this demo, I have two source repository. The first one is the root source repository, which is configured in my application CR. And this refers to another repository as a, a external dependency. So they, they have a parent and child relationship. And now I'm thinking about how I can protect my CD GitOps with digital signatures. So for that, I will introduce Argo CD interest. And uh, to make end to end signature protection in my CD GitOps pipeline, I have installed admission controller on target cluster, which verifies the uh, signature on the Kubernetes resources. And to configure inter Argo CD interest, uh, what I need to do is just three steps. The first one is signing source files. So to put the signatures on the source repository my, with my signing key, the uh, source repository files are protected. So to do that, uh, I can sign the source repo files with these two commands. And then the, uh, these two signature files are generated and uh, these signatures are used by ROCD interest for source material verification. And the second step is configuring ROCD interest with custom resource called interest profile. So uh, this profile has a uh, uh, selector to which application should be scoped in, uh, should be in scope of the, this interest profile. And also it has a public key for the source material verification. And also this has a signing key for the YAML manifest signing. So this is what I'm actually using for interest profile. And it has application selector and public key and signing key reference. And also this has a match function this defines which, what type of resources should be signed by ROC interest. So uh, the, uh, as a final step, this uh, ROC interest will push the uh, signed YAML manifest into OCI registry as our OCI image. And the uh, pushed image and signature will be used by admission controller for verifying the uh, resources. So to specify the location of this OCI image, the, uh, I will specify the OCI image in application CR. And this is the one. 
this my application, PR, has a special annotation here, and it is manifest image. And this is the uh, actual location of the tiny manifest we pushed. So uh, by completing these three steps, I have enabled end-to-end si -end signature protection in my CD GitHub. And let, let me explain how our CD interest works. So first, our CD user will update the content inside GitHub repository, and then it will be detected by our CD. So application sync has started. So then, our CD interest is keep uh, our CD interest keep monitoring the application sync. So it detects sync events, and it starts verifying source material verification. And if its verification has passed, then it signs the generated YAML manifest as an OCI, OCI image. And at the time of admission, uh, when ROCD is trying to deploy the resources, the admission controller will use the uh, pushed OCI image with signature for resource verification. And all the manifest build process are recorded as a provenance data, and it will be sent to provenance store. This is how ROCD interest works. And when the uh, signatures are all OK, then ROCD shows this sync status. This means the uh, application sync has been correctly done, and the, all the resources are deployed on the target cluster successfully. This is successfully OK. But let's imagine that there is an attacker on the target cluster first. So uh, this attacker is trying to target cluster resource without signature, and then this admission controller will block the uh, att attacker's change because the uh, attacker's change is not signed. That, that change does not match with the signed state in the OCI image. So this is actual example of the uh, admission controller denies the attacker's change using chip secret edit. And so this means uh, no one can change the deployed resource on the target cluster without signing. So Argo CD interest only generates the signature for the uh, generated YAML manifest by Argo CD. So Argo CD only can deploy the resource and change the resource, update resource, uh, do that, that kind of operation. Okay, so how about that, uh, source, repo, source repo side? So yeah, and there is an attacker who, is, who has access to the GitHub repository and this attacker is trying to change the file inside Git repo. And actually, this attacker can change the file inside this repository, but then Argo CD interest verifies the source material signature, but signature is not valid anymore because the file has been changed. So uh, then the, because of this, Argo CD interest does not sign the manifest here, so there is no signature for the attacker's change. That's why admission controller can block the uh, attacker's change and application sync for it. So this is actual uh, ROCD UI when blocks the uh, attacker's change for the source repo. And it is showing sync way, so the, the attacker's source file change has not been deployed on the target clusters. So, so far I have, I have been talking about the uh, signature protection on the GitOps pipeline. But uh, I can check, I can verify the deployed resource whenever, any, whenever I want to check by using this kubectl kubestore command. This is provided by kubestore. And by specifying resource kind and public key and OCI image, which I have mentioned in the special annotation. And then it reports the uh, resources sign state. So it, if it has it is showing sign true, it means this resource is, resource keeps the signed state and no change were, change were made to the resource. And not only this kind of uh, binary information, but also some, I, in some cases, I want more details about manifest build. And for that, ROCD interest will produce the, uh, provide the provenance data which contains all the manifest build information. Uh, for example, uh, 
the all source repo URLs and all the version, all commit versions at the time of manifest build. And also, uh, it includes the application, spec, application CR snapshot. So this, this is used for checking the algo CD status at the time of manifest build. And also, the uh, OCI image and its digest are, are included in the provenance. So this provenance is provided by RSCD interest and pushed into provenance store. And once this data is ready on the store, uh, I can query this provenance data by very simple command, and it shows uh, what source reports are actually used and what versions were actually at that time. And build timestamp or other metadata are, are can be checked by seeing provenance data. And the actual provenance, low provenance data is something like this. It is uh, intos JSON format, and it has a uh, list of materials like URL and uh, commit version. And also snapshot, of, uh, snapshot is recorded as a build parameter, so uh, I can check the uh, status of Argo CD at the time of manifest build. And also, of course, uh, the image reference and digest are here. So I can check the, uh, by, ch by checking Argo, by checking provenance data, I can check the, uh, when my application was built and uh, what source repo and what versions were used and how was the uh, Argo CD status were like. Uh, that kind of information can be checked by provenance data. Okay, so let me summarize our today's our talk. So uh, we had addressed the uh, issue in the supply chain integrity of the modern CD GitOps engine. And to solve that issue, we have introduced in Argo CD interest. And actually, I, we have confirmed that Argo CD interest can work for enabling end-to-end -end signature protection and uh, verifiable provenance. Yeah, and overall, trust but verify approach can make the today's application deployment more transparent and accountable and uh, more tweakable. Yeah, that's our conclusion. So uh, these are our contact and please feel free to reach out to us and uh, and also please visit IBM booth. So uh, all the uh, any feedback and comments and questions are all welcome. Thank you so much. So please write hand any question or comment. Okay. Actually, I have a very quick question. You keep referring to uh, interlays profile. Is it equivalent to policy? It's kind of policy, yeah. So What's the difference? Yeah. So the uh, interest uh, profile is uh, uh, not the rule to how the in interest uh, behaves uh, against the application sync event. So what kind of the application, uh, what kind of the sync it, uh, are, GitOps sync should be monitored, which, which resource should be signed, and what is recorded. Those kind of uh, coordination is included in the interest profile. So, so that is a kind of the policy for us, yeah. Thank you. Any question? Yeah, we can. I got it. I got it. Uh, uh, could, you, could you switch on? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that as a 
so the mutation in the cluster the, by uh, or see in the build uh, manifest build step. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, very good question. Thank you. So the Arbitrium control. Okay. So the question is, uh, so the sometimes uh, uh, if you deploy the YAML manifest to the cluster, the, uh, some Arbitrium controller or other Arbitrium controller or even the native transmission controller, sometimes the uh, uh, sidecar may change the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, manifest. So how we can deal with uh, that uh, modification in this uh, signature checking? Am I correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay, so the, that is a really important question. So this is actually we are addressing the, uh, to develop the admission control for the signature, verif signature verification enforcement. The, uh, two six to uh, the, uh, this two, the so that this is a two. Okay, the okay. Well, anyway, so the uh, we have the internally uh, the have the uh, configuration for. Explicitly ignoring some field, so it's a, it's a expected mutation by side side or uh, uh, trusted uh, uh, admission controller or something. So that is one approach. Another approach we uh, we are enabling is a dry run. So internally, admission controller, the in admission controller, dry run create uh, executed, then computes the expected. Uh, changes the, in the manifest, then compare the, uh, which part is the expected, which part is the not expected. Then, so the, the two approaches. So uh, we discussed uh, uh, this, this kind of the challenge and the solution in the different talk in the SIGSTRACOM, the uh, joint presentation with the Jim Baguaria, uh, Kiberno. So the, we actually, we enabled the, this capability in the Kiberon Red Treaties with the Jim Bagaria. So uh, please, please take the, that, the fish, that talk uh, if possible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Hi. It works this time. I'm very confident for you. Talk. Um, so if I understand correctly, the signature that gets created is in the manifest or cosign, right? Is there any reason you did that as opposed to signing the git commit that modified the files directly with cosign, like git sign instead? Ah, uh, yeah, git. Um, that is a really important question, but uh, we, that is, that's uh, uh, we need to look into more. So uh, yeah, the actually obviously git the. YAML manifest signing is totally different from the uh, git commit signing uh, because the use case is different. Commit, commit signing is uh, more of uh, commit, individual commit is signed, but uh, YAML manifest signing is targeting the sign, YAML manifest concept is signed. But the uh, new, new uh, to git sign, git, git, git sign from the signature, maybe uh, we need to look into the more how we can apply that new approach to the, this scenario. Thank you. Okay, any other comment, comment or question? All right, thank you so much. So thank you for the great question.